G'day everyone, welcome back. Hope you're having a great day or a nice night if that's the case for you. It's Thursday morning here in Queensland, Australia and I'm outside in our yard. I thought it was about time I gave you all a garden update. First of all, I just wanted to show you, check out this beautiful, we call it a mock orange uh, bush or shrub that we've got growing. It's actually pretty close to the new garden beds. And after the rain, they've come out with all beautiful flowers. It smells like orange uh, blossom and it's just heavenly. Really, really lovely smell. And the bees are loving it as well. The bees are into the flowers and I've even noticed a butterfly before and different beetles. So come on over to the garden. I'll give you a closer look of what we've been up to. It's changed, hopefully, for the better. <laughs> we've been quite busy, you'll see. And first of all, the biggest difference you'll notice is we've actually put in some proper pathways between the garden beds. I was finding when we were watering, uh, the water's going on the garden beds great, but it also was collecting in between in the pathways and sort of pooling, making things really muddy and slippery. It was quite dangerous to walk up the pathway to move the hose from one stake over to the other one. I was finding I was nearly falling and breaking my neck, which is not good obviously. So I was very fortunate, thank you to anybody who has bought me a coffee in the last little while. I really appreciate it, or anyone who's bought me a coffee at all, thank you. But I did have a little bit of money aside still, and I was able to get, it was a cubic metre of hardwood chip delivered, and we spread it around ourselves in between the garden beds. And I think it's made a really big difference. Well, I know it's made a really big difference. So now when you walk on it, after you've watered, you're not walking in pools of water. The wood chip sort of soaks it up a bit. I think it also looks heaps better, but that not that that really matters, but it is also aesthetically pleasing, I think, to look at the pathways. It looks a bit prettier. And I also think it helps hold all the soil in a bit better as well. So it's got a few benefits um, doing the pathways. So that's the main thing we've done since the last video. Oh, and the other main thing I've done is planted the seeds as well. So come in, I'll show you what I've planted where. Nothing's come up just yet. I've only planted, must have only been a couple of days ago. Uh, first of all, at the gate, my husband's rigged up a little, it's like a bungee sort of cord for the latch. And if we come up the garden pathway... This bed on the left is what I'm calling our greens bed. So it's going to be lettuce, silver beet, spinach, kale. And in the corner there, you'll see a, a little trellis for cucumbers. And this bed over here is going to be the tomatoes and peppers or capsicum chili bed. There is some other herbs in here too. Uh, if we walk up here, you'll see the progress on the flower bed for the bees. <laughs> I have been busy. I've already had to weed. Uh, there's been a fair bit of this purslane come up in between. Ordinarily, I love purslane. I actually eat it sometimes in salads or put it on sandwiches. It's a fantastic uh, weed to eat. It's actually really high in omega-3 fatty acid. So it's super good for you, but I don't necessarily want it growing in between all the other plants. So I'll have to pull out all those extra purslane there. Uh, there's a whole heap of basil you'll see that's come up. And it seems to have come up in a big clump, unfortunately. So I might have to thin that out and move them around a little bit there. I also do have... A big clump of I think this is pak choy seeds when I put in the flower seeds there was a few anybody in Australia would remember when Woolworths or Woolies 
was doing the seed kits and I had a few seed kits still kicking around and I did rip up the little bits of paper with the seeds and mix them in with the flowers but somehow I've ended up with a big clump <laughs> so I did actually harvest and thin out a few the other night and put it in our dinner but I think I'll have to thin it out heaps more so there's a big clump of uh, I think it's pak choy it could be that or mustard greens, but I don't think there was mustard green seeds. I'm trying to remember now, but yeah, I think it's pak choy there. Uh, there is a random tomato as well. <laughs> There's mostly uh, this one with the little white flower. It's already starting to flower. I think this is what you call Allison. And there is a few calendulas I've noticed coming up. These ones here. Uh, Kenya lilies they get a red flower on them as well this one here is a pretty sure this is a little calendula so there's a, a couple different ones come up uh, it's not as many flower seeds as I would have liked to come up so I don't know if some of the seeds I've planted might have been a little bit old perhaps I have had the bee flower mix the seeds for them put aside for a little while so perhaps they've got a little bit too much age on them I'm not too sure so we'll keep watering and find out what happens anyway <laughs> I can always put in a few more seeds uh, this one here I think is a daisy some type is daisy there should be some marigold seeds hopefully coming up too so I think with the recent rainfall we just have to wait and see so that's what it's looking like in the top garden bed and on the other side of the fence here as well we've been busy and we've planted I've put in some rhubarb seeds and some Cherokee wax which is a yellow yellow bean uh, like a bush bean on the other side of the fence just to optimize all the space we've got available and you'll see here I actually had a choco plant grown in a pot and I've dug a hole and I've put it up so it can grow along the top of the garden fence so I've only put this in the ground might have been two days ago so it's slowly starting to adjust it looks a little bit happier today after the rain we had a big storm yesterday and we got 23 millimeters of rain overnight which is fantastic so i didn't need to water the garden yesterday <laughs> the rainbow lorikeets are loving it the birds just go off after the rain there's lots of blossom in the nearby gum trees as well so yeah that's the top garden bed and I'll take you down and I'll let you know what I planted down below now. So in the corner here of the greens garden bed I've planted there's two lines of Siberian kale and then there's two lines of what they call uh, I think it was like a dwarf kale like a curly leaf one. I've tried to do it so hopefully if everything comes up and grows like um, like it should it should look like lines of veggies and then up this end there's two different types of lettuce I've planted there's an all-year lettuce two rows of that and two rows of what they call I think it's black seeded lettuce and I've tried to put the lettuce closest to where it gets the most water thinking about where things are situated in regards to the sprinklers so I've put the lettuce on the corner because I know they'll always need a fair bit of moisture and then on the bottom corner I've got the silver beet if I walk around here I've used just paddle pop sticks as rough markers at the moment just to help me remember where things are so along the front should be two rows of magenta silver bee it has the 
pinky sort of stem and then two rows on the back of just the forward hook silver beet, the ordinary one of the white white stem. Now we call it silver beet here in Australia. You might know it as Swiss chard, I think, overseas sometimes you call it. Now I have managed to squeeze in. It's going to be quite full, this garden bed. In here, there's a couple lots of spinach as well. I think there's, um, I'm trying to remember the variety. I think it was a Bloomfield or Bloomfields long, long leaf spinach. And then there's a Matador spinach on the front too. So a couple rows of each. And you'll see how windy it was with the storm last night. Some of the leaves have come off a nearby tree. The sulfur crested cockatoo has been in the tree as well, eating all the seed pods. It's some type of um, wattle or acacia, I think it is. So they've been having a, a feast as well, but that's just blown in with the storm. Over in the corner here is where I'm going to grow the cucumbers. And I was lucky, I've got three different types of cucumber seeds and I couldn't make up my mind. So I've actually planted a couple of each which might be a bit overkill, but we'll see. If something doesn't grow or if I get too many, I can always take it out. So I've got two lots of, um, usually play more than one seed, just in case one doesn't germinate. So put in two lots of crystal apple cucumbers and in the back corner here, two long white cucumbers and a couple Lebanese cucumbers as well. So there should be about six cucumber plants all on this one little trellis. I might need to thin them out, but anyway, we'll see. So that's what I've planted. So that's the greens and the cucumber garden bed. It's chockers full. Oh, actually in the middle as well. <laughs> if it wasn't full enough already, I did manage to put in a line of mustard greens to about the middle there. And then to the other side, there's a line of Pak choy. It's an early variety with um, like a red, ready green sort of leaves. So yeah, that's everything in that bed. And then coming over to the capsicum and the tomato bed. First of all, on the corner here, I have put in, I had some sweet basil seeds. Not that I probably need any more basil, but... <laughs> With all the stuff coming up in the flower bed but this is just a sweet basil one so i put like a what do you say a 90 degree angle of basil around the corner here there's a couple different types of chili in from the basil seeds and over in this other corner i've put in there's about three rows here of endive like a curly salad green it's slightly bitter and it might actually just be coming up. I've just noticed there's some little green, little green um, plants there. So this looks like this might be some of the end off. I think it is. How cool is that? They've only been in the ground literally a couple days. So all the rain's making it grow already. So we have, yeah, we have endive that's germinated. Yay. <laughs> so endive and then I've also put in a couple types of parsley here. There's Italian parsley, flat leaf parsley, and the curly leaf parsley, and a little bit of garlic chives as well. And then in the middle of the garden bed, I've tried to space it out. I've got a Yolo Wonder capsicum, which is a red, a big red, like bell pepper capsicum. And then there's a golden, I think it's golden delight or golden californian delight something like that it's a yellow one in the middle and on the very top is all the tomatoes again i was trying to think of where the best spot was to situate them regarding the watering when the sprinklers on this particular post here the water does usually pool in the pathway even though you won't be able to see it now with the wood chip so my thinking was the tomato roots will be able to soak up that moisture down below so i've put in 
There should be about three lots of Garden Delight tomatoes here, which is a big cherry tomato. And then we've got a couple lots of beefsteak tomatoes, which are a really big red tomato. And on the end, there's also a couple, what they call moneymaker tomatoes. So yeah, that's my tomatoes. On this corner of the fence as well, this is a curry leaf plant <laughs> that I've got growing just outside of the garden. It's fallen over a bit in the storm last night, or the branches have been weighed down with all the wind. But down below it, you'll see I've actually planted a passion fruit. This is one I had grown in a pot and I'm training it up the fence as well. Over here you'll notice is my little mulberry tree that I've got as well. I've got a dwarf mulberry tree. It's more purslane and some random tomato growing underneath. So there you go. <laughs> so that's our garden at the moment as at the end of November. So hopefully in the next couple of weeks all these seeds in the bottom two beds will come up and I'll be able to give you an update and let you know what it's looking like very shortly. And I did also want to just take a moment to acknowledge what wonderful viewers you guys are. Thank you so much. Uh, firstly to Kathy, who's been so lovely to send me seeds so I could do all the planting in the garden. Thank you, Kathy. I really appreciate it. It's so wonderful. That means the world to me and my family that we've been able to plant all these wonderful seeds. So the seeds that I was telling you I've planted, like there, some of the bush beans. I do actually have some still. I haven't planted all of the different things that we got. And there is some seeds here still, like pumpkins I'm yet to plant. Uh, things like cauliflower that I'll hold back and put in probably March or April, closer coming into the winter months. Uh, beetroot and carrot seeds I also did get, but I don't really have room at the moment for them. Perhaps in the future they'll go in the big top garden bed, I'm thinking. So I'm thinking the carrot, beetroot and cauliflower seeds I'll plant at a later stage going into winter. And there's three different types of pumpkin that Kathy sent as well. I'm really excited to plant this one here. It looks really cool, this variety. Blue, is it curry? I don't know how you say it, but it looks looks really nice. It's like a, a cute little size sort of pumpkin with dark skin and really yellow flesh. It looks wonderful. And there's a baby boo one, which has got like a silvery sort of grey little little pumpkins and I think there was another another one here somewhere too but there's three different types I'm going to actually dig up I've got a separate area where I can put the pumpkins in so there's some pumpkin seed there there is also some broad bean seeds which I'll probably plant coming into winter it's not quite the right time to do that but yeah all these other ones I've got left over cucumber seeds I've only used a couple out of them so I might end up planting some more and sort of doing staggered plantings perhaps uh, I'll see how things go because we're limited a little bit with the space we've got in the particular garden bed that I've set up so I'll have to see but thank you Kathy I really appreciate you sending the seeds and the seeds if anyone's interested are from the seed collection uh, their Australian website and yeah they're really really good how they send them out very minimal packaging in these little bags and I noticed um, I had a look on the website myself the prices are pretty good with the seeds so that's the seeds that I've used in the garden bed apart from in the top garden bed I've used it was another uh, bee mix packet seed as well in the top garden bed plus seeds that I'd save myself with the calendulas and the marigolds and Kathy also sent these wonderful garden tools which is just amazing these ones are a German brand Wolfgarten 
and they look fantastic. I think these will last for decades. The ones that I was using were actually just about had it. I was actually using just an, an ordinary kitchen knife in the garden as well. So to have some proper garden tools is fantastic. So there's a little fork and a little, is it a shovel or a spade? <laughs> this one's a different, they call it something else. This one's one that you're meant to transplant with. It's got a long blade on it. I have actually used this one already in the garden to help reach to the middle of the garden beds to put the seeds in. So that one's super handy. I love, um, love the wooden handle on it as well. So that's awesome. I noticed it's an English brand. Is it Burgon and Ball? Is that how you say it? Sheffield, England. So wonderful quality, lovely garden tools. So thank you, Kathy. I really will treasure these tools. So amazing. Lovely little leather strap you can hook it over, hang it up with. So yeah, really cool. And thank you also, I have to say, especially to Rebecca. Thank you, Rebecca, for sending this beautiful, this is a hori hori knife. It's a special garden knife. I actually put it on my Amazon wish list. I didn't expect anyone to buy it. Thank you so much. It's like an early Christmas present to me. I'll just, if I can show you here one-handed, you need to keep it in the sheath because it's got a sharp edge on it that's a fantastic garden knife it's got like a serrated blade on one side and just another sharp blade on the other side this one here is for cutting rope and it's got measurements so when you are planting you can plant everything the same depth on it as well and really nice handle fits lovely in your hand and it does actually have a belt buckle as well. So you could put it on, like if you're wearing jeans or a belt, put it on when you're out in the garden so you have it handy. So, yeah, wonderful. Thank you so much, Rebecca. I was so excited when that one turned up in the post. So fantastic. I will treasure this. And yeah, every time I use it, I will think of you. <laughs> so thank you so much. Thanks so much everybody for watching. I hope you enjoyed that and hope to have some more garden updates in the future when we've got some more stuff popping up out of the ground. Until next time my friends, take care.